Thank you. Welcome to the BBC. Um, how was the trip over? It was fine. You know, I uh, actually got into, uh, last weekend I had a show in Denmark, so I was over um, in, in uh, Koling, Denmark, uh, on I believe it was Saturday, Saturday night, and then Sunday, uh, almost a week ago now, I uh, came to uh, England, and so I've been in Norwich for the last uh, week, just hanging out with my friends, and uh, now it's time to go to work. We have our show tonight, so now it's time to go to work. So You've been rehearsing? Yeah, we had we had some rehearsals uh, one evening of, of rehearsal and and went great. It's going to really really be good. Good yeah, band, Henry, Henry, oh, Henry, oh Henry Smith, man, yeah, Henry. You'll have some good nights. Now, but you're well known uh, for your songwriting uh, as you are a singer. Tell us some of the songs and who you've written. For. Oh, you know, uh, just I feel so fortunate because uh, a lot of people have recorded my songs. There are people like Kenny Chesney, um, uh, uh, George Strait. Um, <laughs> the, Joe Nichols, of course, George Jones has recorded several of my yeah. songs. Uh, Sarah Evans, Gary Allen, the uh, list goes on and on. It does, doesn't on it? On to like Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge Boys and David Allen Coe, some guys like that, people from, from a while back. Uh, Ricky Van Shelton, you played him earlier. Mm. Uh, he recorded a song of mine. So, um, a lot of people. Now, before I do an interview, I normally do my homework, but I can't find out anything about you. You're pretty anonymous, Billy. Uh, I, can, I can find your songs. I can find nothing about you. Uh, where do you come from? Where do you get your music? I can't find any dirt to dig either. Well, there's not much, you know. Uh, there probably there could be some, but uh, not that, not that, <laughs> not that, that we can talk about, of course. But now I grew up in, in Missouri. I grew up uh, in a small town uh, right in the uh, southeast part of the state. So it's kind of in the central part of the United States, right on the Arkansas line, southerner. Uh, you know, just a small town, about a thousand people. Uh, music was always a big, a big deal around our house, you know, and country music was always the thing. And uh, my mom and dad actually played and sang, and we we did gospel music too. We did; they had a Sunday morning radio program. So I, I grew up uh, at the radio station, so it always feels good to walk into these places, you know. To, to uh, it's like coming home. Uh, and then I went to work at the radio station. I did seven to midnight. Uh, playing records, it was all request, and it was a lot of fun, and uh, a lot of great music um, back in those days too. And, and of course, then around uh, '87 was the year I moved to Nashville. But I started making trips to Nashville just before that, and uh, fell in love with the, the city, you know. Um, and I've always said, even if it weren't for the music, Nashville would be a good place to live. It's a, it's a fun town and a nice place. So, been there for 20 some odd years. Tell us a bit about your personal life, married, children. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I've got one wife and, <laughs> and one child, and uh, uh, my wife, we've been married for 20 years. Uh, we grew up, she grew up in the same town that I grew up in, her name's Nancy, and, uh, and then uh, we have a son who's 12, his name is Grayson, and uh, Grayson, of course, is uh, a real special kid, and, and we're so proud of him, you know, just having the one kid, we, we, we dote on him all the time. But, He's a, he's a real sharp guy, and he loves music too, and so he plays guitar and sings, and so um, we live just uh, north of Nashville, and we have just a, a, like a small farm, and uh, um, so we spend a lot of time, you know, just uh, pulling weeds and normal things, you know, around the house when, when I'm not doing music. I've just noticed that uh, by mentioning home, you've been away a week now, of course, and you were starting to think of the family then, weren't you? Yeah, we you know, well, of course, we stay in touch. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy enough now to, uh, you know, we talk every day. And uh, of course, on Facebook and on you know all the the social media that kind of thing, you can follow keep up with everybody. So it's the same with the family and and uh, yeah, you know you get away, you do sort of get uh, homesick sometimes. You know you start wishing you were at home and and uh, but but honestly, you know when I'm here, I've got good friends, John and Pam. I stay with them and and they treat me. You know they're like family. So it's sort of like being at home when I'm at their place. So. It works out pretty good, but sometimes when I'm away, you know, other places it gets kind of really lonely. And but not here. Not not here. Not no, here. Not, no. Let's talk about the music. Tell me, what's Billy Yates' take on today's country music? You know, I mean, I think that there's there's. Uh, I always have to be careful how I address that because mm. I don't want to come off as old and jaded because I'm not. I mean, I, I just I love great music, and there is some great music today. There's some not so great music today coming out of Nashville. I you know. And I can really only speak for myself in that I listen to what I like and, and, I, and I listen to what moves me and, and I don't listen to a lot of the new stuff just because it don't really. I listen to more pop music, honestly, 
yeah. uh, than I do country when it comes to modern music. Uh, I listen to a lot of the old stuff, you know, so when I'm in my truck driving around or if I'm you know, at home, you know, even sometimes I put on a lot of the old stuff. But I'll probably spend more time listening to, you know, modern country, uh, I mean, modern uh, pop uh, than I do the, the new stuff in, in country, just because it's more interesting to me personally. It's just my own take on it. So does that mean you'll listen to Taylor Swift maybe? Because uh, uh, she's kind of gone more poppy, and you can understand it at yeah, the yeah, age she is. Yeah, she's yeah, yeah. I head. listen to the pop station, which I do a lot. Uh, I hear her, and I hear, so I do get a little bit of, of today's country music on that, and that's all fine, you know. I'd rather hear Adele. I'd rather hear Bruno Mars. I'd rather hear. You know, there's a lot of people like that. that I would rather that I prefer. And you know, you ask. This is just my opinion. And so it's not. It's not that I think everybody should think that way. Because I think music should speak to you personally. It's not something that. Oh well. It's this is what I think, and I, everybody should think it, or everybody should you know have the same opinion. Because you know, I was telling someone earlier. It's like you know, that's why the ice cream shops have so many different flavors because we all like different things and so that's understandable and fair. Is it strange that people like me in the media try to put everything in little boxes you see I try to box you then uh, uh, and uh, you wouldn't be boxed in fact what I always say I don't know whether you'd agree with me or not that uh, if uh, you're listening to music and it's country you think it's country then it's country. Then it's country. That's how I see it. Yeah, and I, I do. I think it's it, it's a personal thing, you know. Mm. So it's whatever you want to. It's hard to label something, and you know, and things change over time. You know, the music that you know everybody talks about. You know, that, that a lot of the real diehard country fans, myself included. You know, you talk about the music of the '60s, the old, you know, the Buck Owens and the all stuff. You know, but but then you go back before that. You know, and there was Roy Acuff. You know, on back. You know, you, or you ha or you have Hank Williams. Well, that music evolved mm -hmm. over time. It wasn't the same music. You had Jim Reeves, who was a crossover artist, but we all, you know, love him as a country, you know, uh, hero. Sure. You know what I'm saying. So it all changes. Patsy Cline was a crossover artist. So it all changes. So you could argue all that stuff all day long, and and there's no right or wrong answer. I don't believe. I, I believe it's just you know, music should speak to you personally, and and whatever it is you like, that's okay. It, it moves you and it makes you feel something, and it's 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 good. You made me happy. You and I are talking the same language. In the states, you're used to playing to thirty thousand, fifty thousand. What's it going to be like tonight playing at Hemsby Village Hall for probably about 300 people? You know, it's the show sold out tonight. Yeah. And, and uh, any, you know, I, I'm, I'm the same uh, whether I'm in front of, you know, 30,000 or if it's, you know, 20. I, you know, I, I go out and I have a good time because I love the music. I love performing the music. I love singing. I love, you know, the shows. and, and uh, But as much as anything, I, 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 the, the smaller shows... I probably do prefer those simply because I love to stay after the show and, and meet everybody. And when you're playing these big, big arenas or something like that, you don't really, you really can't do that. There's, you know, not enough time. And and uh, so shows like this, it's fun just to hang out. And of course, I have a lot of friends at Jack's, and I've you know been there a few times. And Jack's show great friends, and so I look forward to going there and, and being able to just, you know, be myself and have a good time. Would you say the British audiences are different uh, from those in the States? Yeah, we're all human beings, but uh, I take on like humor is different. Uh, are the audiences different? Do they treat you differently? You know, I, get, you know, I don't, I don't, you don't notice it as much. Uh, I think that, that, you know, as I travel all over, and I, and I do more shows now in the UK and in Europe, and, and I find those, the audiences, you know, over here to be similar that way, uh, more so than, than the difference in the States may be that they may not pay as much attention to the details. You know, I, I do find a lot more country fans here who they know who played on their records. They know they know more of the details, which was the kind of fan I always was and, and still am. I like to read the liner notes. I like to know what's going on. So they seem a little more educated over here on those matters. You know, if anything, I mean, they still applaud. And they still they still enjoy the shows and they love their music. So there's all that in common, and that's all maybe about the same. Maybe it, there may be some age difference in some places you go. You may find older audiences. You know, as some of the shows here where in America, you may find a lot younger audiences. There's that that kind of thing to to consider. But I got I've got loads more questions, and it's sadly I've not got time. Oh, my answers are too. <laughs> no, long. your answers are great. They're really good. And thank you for them. Just give uh, me yes or no questions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> give me a yes or no to this. Do you prefer being in the studio creating or being on stage performing? Uh, on the stage. On the stage with the people. Uh, Great. Um, now, new album's just come out. Tell me the name. Only one George Jones. And uh, George, you know, was a great friend. We we, uh, we met back in around, well, we met earlier, but we became friends really in, in 92 when he recorded a song of mine called I Don't Need Your Rocking Chair. We, uh, 
you know, it, it's just difficult, you know, when I think about George and I think about the all the fun times that we had. And so when we lost him, it was uh, a, a difficult thing. It was twofold. I, I missed my friend. But I also, you know, would hear all those old songs come on the radio. And and then I missed him as a fan, you know, so I had that, went through those same emotions. This record, the song, Only One George Jones, was written a few months ago. Actually, I was in Ireland on tour. And I was sitting at the hotel, uh, waiting to go do uh, the Late Late Show, uh, and I started thinking about George, and I was worried about him. He'd been in the hospital, and he was not doing real well. And so anyway, he in, he he ended up coming through it okay. But I wrote the song, uh, sitting at the hotel in the lobby, uh, wrote it all kind of just in my head, and, and uh, got back to Nashville, recorded it, and I was able to play it for George uh, through Nancy, and and uh, they. Got a kick out of the song. She said that you know George liked it and everything, and so uh, I told him I was going to include it on make it kind of the centerpiece of my record. I kind of want to do a tribute of sorts to him, and the whole record, of course, is not songs that he are about him or anything. There were some songs on there that I wrote a while back that I played him, pitched him that he did not record. Uh, there's one uh, we came back with. A, uh, there's a duet that we did on a song I wrote called Choices. Uh, that we recorded a while back and is on it actually featured on a, an earlier record so we put it on this again as a bonus track um, so it's 15 new songs that uh, you know some are, are things that were were done five ten years ago and uh, because they were things that were written kind of for George so it is a tribute to him in, in that regard this just the, the record was it was being manufactured at the time he passed away and uh, so if you read the liner notes, and there's a, a big thank you to George, and it's written as if he's still alive because he was when it was written. And that album's available uh, at your gigs when you're going round, and of course it's available in the shops as well, or oh, yeah. will be very yeah, shortly. Yeah, yeah, it's available in most of the shops and online, of course, you know, your all your digital download sites, sure. that kind of thing. And of course it's available at the shows. And the interesting thing is when you go onto your website, the music is playing there as well. When I was trying to find out things about you, there I was listening to your music. In fact, I forgot to look about anything, I was enjoying the music. <laughs> Billy Yates, uh, sadly our time is up. I've got to play the song. It's been wonderful meeting you. Thank you very much indeed for giving your time up and coming to see us here at BBC Radio Norfolk. I really appreciate it. We're going to play a song now. What am I going to play? Only one George Jones, right? <laughs> 